Welcome to this uh, short tutorial. I will try to cover the two biggest used programs uh, like uh, Vegas Pro and Premiere Pro. And most of what I will say applies to any program, any editing program at all. So you should definitely watch it, especially if you're doing videos since the time or you're completely new, but you have actually never learned how to do it right. So most people just start making videos and that's fine, but they, there's no school or something, so they will most likely do some mistakes, including myself. So when I started to make videos, I also made some basic mistakes. I'm very happy that some people corrected me in the comments and told me how to do it right. So I learned from that. I learned from my own mistakes and I want to help other people to do it right. This is an example that I recently found on YouTube. I'm very happy that the owner allowed me to show it. He's basically new to filmmaking and he edited in Sony Vegas. What I can tell from just watching the video. Because there's an issue that only appears in Vegas and it's something that you can't really fix by default. So you have to know some really dirty uh, workarounds for that. <laughs> Right, so this was a project um, where a lot of different fursuiters just submitted video files and anyone just recorded in a, f in a different frame rate. So editing this in Sony Vegas is something you shouldn't do. So let, let's just say that. Um, well, because Sony Vegas is not made for um, throwing in different frame rates and it will most likely do it very wrong. So as you can see here, we can see that he's actually just not one frame. He's made out of two frames. And that's something that the video program does because it doesn't know what is 50p. And it thinks like, oh, uh, I'm getting in 50 FPS. I would just handle this as interlaced video. And interlaced video is actually something uh, very old. So if, if your camera only shoots interlaced video, you should probably do an update. I know some people like to work around with big a fancy looking cameras and um, problem is if you buy a big camera there are a lot of buttons on it and you basically have to pay a higher price so let's just say you have 5000 euros or less you can't really get a good big camera you should probably go with a small camera because then you get more for your money a smaller camera less buttons um, better overall quality uh, but if you want a big camera you have to pay a big price so if people want to to have both like a big camera but a cheap price they will probably get an interlaced camera or just a camera which is which doesn't produce such a good quality like a smaller camera for the same price could do however if your camera should interlaced you have to convert it to 25p so 50 interlaced this is the i at the end if, if, you, if your screen shows 50i that means it's interlaced if your screen shows 25p or 50p it's progressive interlaced basically means that you have two uh, images which are basically half images so back in the days when those uh, technique was used uh, they had a problem with data speed, so you couldn't get all your data from the sensor to the storage medium. So you needed to apply some dirty tricks to do that. So you basically just read out half of the sensor, uh, save this image, and then later you you read the other half of the image, save this image, and then you have interlaced uh, video basically. And you, you kind of like trick the eye to see it as normal images. But well, basically it's not. So today what you would do is to convert it to 25p. And uh, with nowadays uh, with software it's it's possible to do that without losing too much quality. So you can get a decent progressive image. But if you ask me just please don't do it. Please use progressive because interlace is too old and you, you just shouldn't do it. Okay so now that I bashed all the interlaced video camera users uh, let's get back to the topic this is actually not an interlaced um, image and it never was problem is it was 50p you throw it in vegas as i will show you later and vegas is like oh i'm getting 50 fps this must be interlaced and then it's handled as, as interlaced and just put together two images and this is the result so 
okay, I mean, you, you could you could live that if you play it. Um, but if you know how much quality you could actually get, just take this shot as a comparison. This is the quality that you can get. And this is the quality that you lose with this interlaced shit. So you will probably want the best quality out of your videos. Let's just take a look. This guy here used progressive, as you can see. This is also progressive. <laughs> as you can see, it's like he, he's almost double on the image, especially if he's moving. So you will probably spot it if the image is moving. So in Premiere Pro, you just may make a new project. Let's say it's all right. It doesn't matter what you put in here. It just really doesn't matter. <laughs> There's some errors going on, but that's normal. All right, then you have your 50p stuff which you can tell from right click details and then you see like oh okay it's actually 25p what the fuck is this 50p oh this is 50p nice okay so we have 50p and 25p and um, usual this is a normal situation and now we have to choose the stuff with the highest frame rate actually so if we choose a 50p right and then it just gives us a warning, which is really nice. Don't unclick this. This is a, the most important warning ever. So just click change sequence settings. That's basically it. Now you have a sequence in 50p. And that's really nice. Yeah, then you drag and drop the other footage. Okay, as you can see, this is also normal FHD. It doesn't matter. Just going to motion. Enter in 200. All right. So we just matched those two files together now. And now if I want to render this, I just go to export media. I go into H.264. I have my 4K uh, setting. You can also upscale a full HD to 4K. Uh, probably will deliver better footage if the camera is really good with a really high bitrate. Then you can upscale it. Um, yeah. So as you can see, it's 4K, 25. Profile size level is 5.1. Render at maximum depth, of course. Use maximum render quality, of course. Two pairs, 25, 25 is absolutely okay. Actually, this is a settings that bypass uh, some of the strangest YouTube issues. So uh, I have this usually two pairs, 25, 25. All right. Use maximum render quality. Now, I told you never, never, ever use frame blending just don't do it okay all right guys don't click this the worst thing ever it would basically <laughs> make this into this 25 uh, material into a 50p uh, but out of two images it's really crazy don't do it all right now you click on expert and that's basically it Ta -da! all right i will wasp them i won't encode right now now to close this program, you have to go in like task. It's crashing right now. All right. So this is it. Now let's do the same thing in Vegas. And this is where it gets really complicated. What this program installs. Let's talk about a little bit more about shutter angles. Um, this is like the film was really old. There was a physical thing going around and around. So this is where the 180 degrees come from this is basically 180 degrees open 180 degrees closed you can like go to 90 degrees and then you see it's less exposed so the image will get sharper uh 180 degrees is the biggest um thing you should use uh, also the default because as you can see if you use 45 degree shutter uh, then it appears with less motion blur, which can kind of like look strange. I used it in some of my outdoor videos because I wanted to uh, shoot with a big uh, depth of field. But basically keep it 180, please. If you go like 360 to get more light, this is <laughs> the worst thing you could do. Because as you can see, it gets all blurry and looks just really strange. Just don't do it. I had some discussions on Twitter and YouTube with people who are arguing like, I need the light. I don't want to push up ISO too, too much. So 
Interesting. I would rather shoot in a, a lower FPS than like shooting at 25p or 50p and not in 180p or something like that. Just shoot at 180 degrees and you can basically uh, calculate this. If you, if you can't set your camera to 180 degrees like some cameras can do and you can only set the shutter at 150 of a second or 100 of a second they basically just take your frame rate, which is probably 25p, multiply it by 2, and then you have your shutter. So 25p means one-fifth of a second, and 50p means one hundred of a second. Two hours later, we managed to get a, a test version of Vegas Pro 14. You can get this for 30 days if you want to. Uh, I recommend to use Premiere Pro, obviously. It's a really, really complicated program at the beginning, but there's so less that you can do wrong. Uh, put this into Vegas, then program crashes. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work. Okay, uh, maybe this. Oh, holy shit! All right, I, I start to hate this program already. I uh, want to my match, of course. Yes. Right now we have the 4K video in it. Beautiful. Um, then you probably want to render it. Uh, something like render as all right. Uh, so let's let's see what we can put together here. Uh, we need MP4, obviously. Ah, yeah. There there are two different kinds of uh, MP4. You want this Sony. Right, so internet probably. This looks good. Oh, wait, we we don't get all right. Customize. Um, yes. All right. What the fuck? Okay, so we could render in fifty p, right? Because, uh, as you can see, let's go back in Explorer, settings. All right, details. So this is 50p material, obviously, so we want to render it in 50p. And this is the only workaround how we don't get any strange problems. Yeah, okay, right, bitrate, let's, let's do the same, like 25. So you can see in the preview already if it's uh, handled as interlaced or not. That was correct, all right, close. Now I will do the front approach to render it. I customize 25. And now um, we have this thing here. So it's non, it should get handled as progressive, all right. Upper field first, lower field first, all right. So if I would do that, it would get handled as interlace. If I would do that, all right. Uh, as you can see, it gets really blurry. Uh, you can see it already, because it it still can't do the progressive thing, which I I talked about earlier. I want to to get another file. I can see it a bit better. All right, there's some movement. That's better. Oh, I freaking hate Sony Vegas for that. Why can't you just drag and drop files like in Premiere? Holy shit! Export, render as. All right, there's our template again. Twenty five p. And yeah, progressive scan. It's not progressive. What are you doing? I, I told it should do a progressive scan. Normally this problem shouldn't appear. And you can see again, it doesn't handle it as progressive. Holy shit. This is, I, I really hate this program for that because it says, oh, let's do a progressive scan. That's that's a correct approach. But it doesn't do a progressive scan. It just do some really dirty shit. Holy whatever. <laughs> Okay, you can see that. That's a really good example. Look, I, I don't even need another video. I can <laughs> produce my own examples here. So, it <laughs> looks so crazy. Alright, so, close. Let's export it again in 50p. That's the only workaround which works without other tools, but I have a dirty fix for you. As you can see, just a normal motion blur and not this double image problem that we had earlier. This is how it should be. Right, let's take a look at the final video. 
So this is the interlaced example, and this is already dirty. You can see it in a lot of YouTube videos. And this is the normal 50p version. Now we can put this down to 25p without any problems in Premiere, but not in Vegas. Now let's just uh, search for Flickr Buddy. I will put a link in the description. This is from 2009, and this is how old the problem is. So you download JS file. All right, preparing download. Scripting, run script. Uh, there it is. You just open it. Ah, uh, we are fucked. <gasps> okay, so you don't need the tool anymore. All right, back in older versions, you needed the tool, the script basically, which disabled all the resample clips, basically for all the clips. And now it doesn't it doesn't work without. All right, we learned so much from YouTube tutorials, as you can see. Ah, uh, thank you, Victor. Thank you very much. You have to highlight a clip, go to edit, switches, and then disable resample. So what it does is actually just tell the program not to do this dirty interlaced stuff. I guess you need to do this for every clip in your timeline. So that means if I go now to, f to this switches, it's again use project resample mode. Okay, you know what? Fuck Sony Vegas. Use Premiere Pro. You're done. <laughs> so funny enough, I edited my tutorial video and I realized that I also made one big mistake. Like basically the biggest mistake ever. Match the settings uh, of your project. Which is actually something you should find in any video editing uh, program. And it's really, really important. If you start the project, you should go into settings and take a look what's in here. So should be the setting of your best resolution that you have. Uh, field order should be none, which means progressive scan. Um, frame rate should be the highest that you have in your um, project. All right, good, of course, Gaussian is also nice. And then you have the interlace method, just turn it off, so none. All right, and here you find the project resample mode. So if you go in here and just disable it, so then you click apply, all right. And now we will take a look. I didn't did any of this um, switch thing now. It's uh, used, is just use the project sample mode. Render as in it, of course. Now I go into template. Now I set to 25. All right, now I should, this is really important. I forgot it also. Um, you should uh, like get a custom frame size which matches your actually file size uh, which is 4k you can see it here it's a project size all right now this allows us to just frame size never work for me best all right let's just save it 25 so 4k 25 save your setting okay render Thank you very much. <laughs> I hate this program so much. Export. Render S. What is wrong with you? I don't know. It's... Oh, wait. It can't uh, export 4K? Why? I mean... It's... It's... Vegas 14. What's wrong here? All right, now you can see it's it's all correct. Um, so that's probably uh, the approach that works for most programs that you uh, try to find the timeline settings or project settings, and then you need to match it actually, so that your project um, is the same that your actually footage is. So 50p if you have 25 and 50p or 25 if you have just 25. And here you can also set the resample mode to disable, uh, the deinterlaced mode to none, and then you get rid of all this uh, strange uh, problems. I wonder why they don't put it on default, because as I showed earlier, I just dra drag and dropped it in here. 
and it, it told me okay yes i will apply the project settings to your footage but it actually didn't and this is really disappointing for me so yeah i got fooled because i used to work with a premiere pro all right so here you have a solution which should work for every program so you just need to find the timeline or project settings and need to apply the right settings which is the highest frame rate you have actually uh, 50p in this case uh, then you disable all the the interlace mode sh shit and disable resample and then you're good to go all right so as you can see there's a solution it's hidden as fuck now you can render in 25p and in 50p as you wish i would always recommend if you have 50p and 25p that you render in 50p because this way you bypass all the problem that you can get however um some people may don't want to mix uh 25p with 50p because you can really spot the difference and it's a little bit weird for the viewer to see the uh, 50p 25p difference mm, also one important thing is that i actually have this in one video right now so uh, go back and see my newest video which came out lately and you will see there are two frame rates mixed so some scenes are in 25p and some scenes are in 50p vegas is a nice tool if you have a really large project don't want to say too much bad things about it because i actually use it for years um switching to premiere pro was a really hard step because you lose all the all the nice things you have like scrolling and doing this here you lose all this ability with the key press to split a clip but if you google it you can actually also set this up in premiere so that you can also cut a clip with a key press and once you do this and some other settings uh, it works quite nice and you also have a magnetic timeline, which is nice. Premiere also has this uh, delayed and close thing, which is really handy. I can't find it here. So in Premiere, you can right click and delete and close. And you can also set this to a key. And then it just basically what it does is, bam, it closed the gap. Coming back to the shutter issue, you kind of get something like the interlaced issue. So if you go down with the shutter, um, kind of like to get in more light and you you lose this 180 shutter degree rule then you can also get some pretty decent interlaced uh, problems let's call it like that because your camera basically don't have enough time to finish one frame and expose the next one and your camera will basically internally mix the two frames together and it starts to look really weird i had this in some videos uh, by accident because i just came on the button of my camera in which changed the shutter but i know some people who just do this by default they are like oh i need more light then i can just uh, <laughs> do the, do it like and they can just uh, expose it longer and i get more light that's pretty nice but later you see that you lose a lot of quality and you should uh, really avoid to do that just keep the 180 degrees shutter rule and you're fine 